Welcome to the old bloke's kitchen. Now over the course of the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you what I consider to be the ultimate bacon sandwich. I like to think that everybody likes a bacon sandwich, but if you concentrate on buying the bits from your local supermarket, it really is a pale imitation of what it really could be. So if you break the process of making a bacon sandwich down into a number of small parts, and then you make all the parts yourself, then what you end up with is a much better bacon sandwich makes sense really doesn't it so what we're going to do over the course of the next couple of videos is we're going to break that process down so first of all we'll make the bacon and then I'll show you how to smoke the bacon along the way we'll make some pork scratchings because that's a byproduct then we'll make some sauce to go in the sandwich because every bacon sandwich has got to have some sauce we'll make the butter depending on how we feel we might get around to smoking the butter smoked butter is one of those great treats in life then we'll make the bread and then we'll put it all together in the final episode which will be the proper bacon sandwich and by heck it's good. So we'll do all of this outside, don't worry there will be plenty of fire involved because everybody likes cooking over a fire. So without any further ado, let's get on with it. So the first thing you need is one of these plastic storage boxes and we need some salt. I've got 50 grams of salt. And in that, I put two and a half grams of a preservative called Prague powder. This is something you can buy online, or you can probably get it from your butchers. And it's just there to preserve the meat, stops botulism. Normally I don't bother with preservatives. Um, nothing hangs around that long. But I really don't like botulism. So uh, in this particular instance, we'll use Prague powder. Into that, we put an equal amount of dark brown sugar. And we mix it all up and this is going to be our cure just to help it along a little bit i'm going to put some smoked paprika and a little tiny bit of white pepper now if you've never done this yourself this is the hardest bit which will give you a clue as to how easy this process is for the amount of effort you'll expend, this will be the finest thing you will ever make. Now, once you've got that nicely mixed up, what you need is a piece of pork. Now here I've got a kilo of back bacon, or a kilo of back pork, and I've got it from a proper butcher's, and I've got him to take the skin off. Don't worry, we'll do something with the skin in a moment. So we get our piece of pork, what we want to do is to rub the cure in as much as we can, get it in all those little nooks and crevices, and we put it in like that, and that's all there is to it. That's really as difficult as it gets. I'll put the lid on that in a moment, and what will happen is that will go in a fridge, um, and it will be there for five or six days, and it will soak all the moisture out of the pork, and hopefully some of the sweetness of the sugar will go back into it. That will be bacon. Well, that was difficult, wasn't it? Now, one of the lovely little byproducts of doing this is we end up with this skin. Now, you can throw it away, but why bother? Because this is one of the greatest things there is. And we're going to make pork scratchings. So, you want some salt, just normal everyday table salt, and you rub it in. You do both sides. Because I particularly like paprika, we're going to put a little tiny bit of that on the top. And now what we do with that is we leave that in the fridge uncovered um, overnight. So the salt will draw out all the moisture from the skin and then tomorrow that's ready to be turned into pork scratchings. 
believe me, this makes the whole process worth it. If, the, if you never did the bacon, this would be worth it. Add the bacon to it as well, and it's a win-win situation. What more can a man want? So as you can see, we now have our bit of pork skin, and that's been in the refrigerator overnight. And I've got the, the oven nice and hot. So I'm gonna put that into there. And we need to get this really hot for about the next 20 minutes. Now, of course, you can't do this in your domestic oven. It needs to be about 220 for the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and then drop it down to about 180 for the next hour. Just going to sit back and wait now. Well, it's been a good hour, so let's uh, have a look, see how we got on. <laughs> have a look at that. I think we've just discovered the new Norfolk superfood. Well, I have to say this is about as good as it gets. These are absolutely delicious. I think I know what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. Oh, that is really good. Mm. <laughs>